Okay, so now it's time for us to create our first component. Let's start by opening the Angular CLI project. And let's open the source folder and then the app folder. In here, you would find the app.component.ts file. And this is the root component for this project. Let's delete the content of this file and try to write on our own. We'll start by writing a class. So I'm going to write export class. I'm going to name this class as app component. We use the keyword export so we can import this particular class in another script file. And what we wanted to create is not a class but a component because Angular component gives you a lot of other features like dependency injection and the ability to access DOM elements within the class. So how do we tell Angular that you intend a class to be treated as a component? Simple, just use the component decorator. So what is a decorator? A decorator is an expression that evaluates to a function and makes it possible to annotate and modify classes at design time. Angular has a bunch of decorators that it provides in the framework. For now, our focus is on add component decorator. You use the component decorator provided by the Angular framework to tell Angular that you intend a class to be treated as a component. The syntax for using a component is an add symbol followed by the name of the decorator. So in this case, it's component. And then a pair of parentheses. But as you can see, component is not recognized here. And that's because we need to import the component decorator so we can use it. The first bit of code we need to write is an import statement. We start with the keyword import followed by a space and a pair of curly braces. Inside the curly braces, we list the types that we want to import. In our case, we want to import component decorator so we will put that in our curly braces. We can import more than one type for a module by adding a comma after each. So something like this. We don't have to do that right now, but we'll cover that later. After the curly braces, we put a space and then the from keyword, followed by another space. Now, we need to put the module name in the form of a string. Angular provides a handful of modules in its framework and it exposes them via the module names. The component decorator comes from the at angular slash core module bundle. So for the string of the module name, we put at angular slash core. We end our import statement with a semicolon. The component decorator takes in an object with some known properties to configure the class we decorate as an Angular component. These properties are known as metadata. We'll use an object literal inside the component decorator parentheses. And for now, we'll just set the selector property and the template property. Selector, I'm gonna name this as my hyphen app. And for the template, I'm gonna have an h1 tag. And within the h1 tags, I'm gonna say, welcome to Angular 2 and I'm going to save this. Angular CLI has also created an app.module.ts file for us, which is our root module. So we need to add our root component to the root module. So let's understand what's there in the module.ts file. Now that you know how to create a component, it's easier to understand how to create a module. So we have an import statement for browser module, which comes from the angular slash platform browser module bundle. 
Since this is a web application that runs in a browser, your root module needs to import the browser module. Modules are also classes. So in order to tell Angular that this particular module called the app module is a module, we need to attach ng module decorator to the class. So in order to use ng module decorator, we need to import it and it's available under the angular slash core module bundle. So we import ng module from angular slash core module bundle. Since angular CLI creates an application that's ready to run, it also imports the forms module and the HTTP module. While we may not be using these two modules in this particular video, we will let them stay as is. And then, now we wanted to import our root component into the root module. So in order to do that, we add an import statement here. And note that this is not the module name, but it is the actual file path. The system.js loader is configured to load file paths without the extension. So that is why we leave off the .ts extension here and it still works. The ng module decorator takes in a few configurations as an object literal. It has declarations where we can add our components and then imports where we add the modules that we import and intend to use in this particular application. Providers is where we can add the services that we might be using in this application. Bootstrap is where we are telling Angular that we want to bootstrap this application with the app component. Now we need to tell Angular to start up the application. It is done in the main.ts file, which is in the root folder. So let's go to the main.ts file. This code initializes the platform that your application runs in and then uses the platform to bootstrap your app module. Because our application runs directly in the browser, we are importing platform browser dynamic from etangular slash platform hyphen browser hyphen dynamic module bundle. If you are developing your application for some other platform, then you might load a module specific to that platform. For example, Apache Cordova or Native Script. And then use a bootstrap function that is specific to that platform. The next two imports are related to the environment setup. And then the next import statement is to import our app module. In the if condition here, we are setting up the environment. And finally, we are bootstrapping the application with the app module. So let's summarize what we have learned in this video. So we have created a component. So we have first created a class and then in order to tell Angular that it is a component, we attached an add component decorator to it. And in order to make use of the add component decorator, we imported it from the Angular slash core module bundle. And then we included the selector and template metadata to the add component decorator. After creating our root component, we went on to the app.module.ts file and where we have seen how to create a module. So in order to tell Angular that this particular class is a module, we added the ng module decorator. And to make use of the ng module decorator, we again imported it from the Angular slash core module bundle. Since this application is going to be a web application and that will run on the browser, we had to import the browser module. And then we have declared our app component under declarations. And the modules that we are using in this particular module.ts file, we included them under imports. We have also learned that in order to make use of the services, we can add them to the providers configuration. And finally, we tell Angular to bootstrap this application with app component. So now that we have added 
the app component to the app module, the next thing that we want to do is to start off the application. And we do that from the main.ts file. And to bootstrap the module, we make use of platform browser dynamic, which is part of the angular slash platform hyphen browser hyphen dynamic module bundle. And in here, we import our app module. And we tell Angular to bootstrap this application with the app module. You might be thinking, why create three separate files? One for component, one for module, and one for bootstrapping the application. Well, app bootstrapping is a separate concern from creating a module or creating a component. Testing a component is much easier if it doesn't also try to run the entire application. So keep that in mind, have separate files for your components, separate for your modules, and then always keep your bootstrapping away from your components and modules into the main.ts file. 